you are about to listen to Kaku chapter 152. The last words of Kaku Philip, to you old Frank. Oracles that prophet Kaku Philip pronounced from Kataji, his village, on July 17, 2022. Extracted from the book of prophet Kaku Philip, the only true prophet sent by the Lord Jesus Christ, in fulfillment of the cry of Matthew 25 6 for the salvation of our generation. Kaku chapter 152, the last words of Kaku Philippe to Ewald Frank. Words that I, Prophet Kaku Philippe, I have addressed this July 17, 2022 from my village, to Ewald Frank and to all the believers of the message of William Branham in the whole world. By the grace of God, I feel well. In all my life, I have never been on an intravenous and I have never laid in a hospital bed. My secret is holiness. And when I started my ministry in 2002, for my 1.78 meters, I weighed 64 kilograms. But now I weigh between 60 and 62 kilograms without fasting. All the pastors that I knew in 2002 have put on weight except those who have failed. Well. On July 8, 2022 in Kataji, I consecrated the Apostles Pedro A. Lexo from Mozambique, Dutamar Costa from Brazil and Pascal Vici from France. This was in the presence of the valiant Apostle Kosayelu from Togo. And I have also established new Apostles such as Anaceto Manuel from Angola, and Luis Coronado from Mexico. It was he, Luis Coronado who led Apostle Caesar Esparza to the Tabernacle of Perry Green in Tucson, Arizona, USA, on Sunday, April 14, 2019. Also in these last years, Apostle Blanchard Mosley has distributed several suitcases of flyers in the U.S. states of Kentucky, California, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Missouri, Maryland, New York and New Jersey and many others. And in Boston. A 73-year-old white man received him at his place and told him that he wanted to be baptized. Him and his wife. And behold, this was the man whose daughter had written to me from Cape Verde. It was a Catholic priest who had preached the message to him secretly. And had given him the whole printed message. And I was astonished that a Catholic priest could do that. In the message, we are all disciples but some can be busy with their work. And they are the ones who must take care of the financial needs of the message. And when the message and its expansion are not the main work or the concern of a pastor, he must not use the tithes and offerings for his personal needs as a Levite would. If he does, it is a forbidden act and a curse that he calls upon his head and upon his house. Also, a preacher in the pulpit has full power to name sins and the people and go to the end of his preaching. And whoever is not happy with his preaching, it is in the group of the country that he must go and complain. And also, a preacher must not shout at his interpreter. Someone who sees his father or mother or a relative in a dream in the form of a demon must never accuse them of wanting to kill him because it is almost always members and leaders of his religious community. A dream is a message from God to you, and you must meditate on it to understand it. For example, the urge to urinate or to defecate means that you are on the path of sin. And if you are naked in a dream, you must know that you are acting outside the will of God. And if you are without shoes then you lack zeal. Shoes are the zeal and the application of God's word. And the lack of love and disorder in a community are the consequence of the incompetence of its leader. And when someone does not have the qualities or abilities to lead people, he transforms himself into a dictator and surrounds himself with disciples. And if you tell him the truth in public, his disciples will attack you in private. Well, the message is moving faster and faster. 
Mozambique has gone from 52 assemblies in February 2021 to 70 assemblies in June 2022. Many churches are joining the message. And also, the message has started to raise up in the field of evangelism. Many child preachers like Josue Mukangu, Kelly, and Samuel Ngawaka, Loik Muko and Methushla and many others. And my prayer is that the whole world be filled with them. Also, the translation is progressing well. In 2021, the midnight cry was only in 44 languages. That was nothing. In the Central African Republic, 63% of the population only speak Songo. And the message was not yet in Songo. South Africa has 11 official languages, of which the most spoken is Zulu. But the message was only partly in Zulu. India has 22 major languages, each spoken by millions of people. And translations are now underway in many languages. And the translation is done by believers. The translation of his message into all the languages of the earth is one of the tests that a prophet must pass before his death. A doctrine is a perpetual law established by God through a prophet. A false doctrine is a perpetual law that does not come from a prophet. And legalism is the literal application of the message and the rejection of everything that is not written. Even if it is not against the spirit of the message. And legalism is of the devil. For example, if a pastor says, for this morning's service, we will put the children together for a better follow-up by the deacons. This is correct if the congregation finds it good. This is the spirit of the message. But if he says, from now on, we will put the children together for a better follow-up by the deacons. Then, it is not correct because no one, if he is not a prophet, can establish a doctrine. You must keep pace with everything that is done everywhere in the message. The religious leaders despise me but I will do the will of God. I did not believe in God and I was pushing the wheelbarrow on a house construction site. And an angel appeared to me on April 24, 1993 and said to me, Come, follow me. The Almighty God has chosen you to do His will. What would I do if it is not to wait like a fool for what God will tell me to do? All of you, religious leaders of the earth, you have never had a vision with your eyes open. You are all blind and disciples of money. You walk by yourselves and want me to do as you do so that God will reject me like you. I will never make this mistake. I will always walk by dreams and visions, and I will do the will of God. The Lord Jesus, the Master himself, said, I do nothing unless I see the Father do it first. And when the angel commanded me not to receive money anymore, I obeyed. And everything that is money has become a forbidden thing to me. And how many tithes and offerings are given in my message, and how it is managed by the pastors and apostles. I do not seek to know. A prophet must be aware that he is a man who can be wrong, and therefore must not rely on his imagination to speak. When William Branham talks about the serpent that walked in Eden, and he describes its shape, its size and how hairy it was, was it his imagination? And when Abel burned the fat of the firstborn yearling male lamps, without blemish, of his flock, as an offering to God, was that his imagination? And it was through the angel of April 24, 1993 that I came to know that contraception was satanic. For health reasons, I had contacted my friend Jan Renee who is a medical doctor, and also brother Roland Mellage to suggest me a contraception for my wife. And I had a revelation and I saw brother Roland in his nurse's outfit but he was a man who inflates tires. And he was about to pump air into a very skinny Chinese woman. And the angel said to me, sex dolls and their owners do not go to paradise. And the vision left me. And in the face of this, should I think? And to say what? 
That is why, know that for each point I am going to talk about today concerning Ewald Frank, it is based on visions. And if a Branhamist has known me since 1993, he will tell you that with Kaku Philippe, it's dreams and visions. But he will also tell you that my dreams and visions have never failed. And they know how in the middle of a service, I announced literally, without any symbol, that the two deacons were going to unite and divide the church. And that people would come from far to try to reconcile them but they would not succeed. No one believed me because of the peace and harmony that prevailed there. And also, the senior deacon was working at the Société des Transports Abidjan and could not do that. His time would not allow him to be a pastor. And Pastor David said that they were people who would come from a distance to try to divide the church. And later on, the senior deacon lost his job at the transport company. And with the help of the second deacon, he divided the church and became the pastor. And the Kasi, which is the general council of the Branhamists of Ivory Coast, came to try to prevent the division but they did not succeed. And the church was divided. And Pastor David went away with a part of the church. I have had a multitude of visions that have never failed once. And based on the visions, I revealed the origin of the black skin of the Africans. And I saw what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah before their destruction. And when the angel had revealed to me how Judas Iscariot was from the tribe of Dan, I had then searched the internet. And everywhere it said that Judas Iscariot was from the tribe of Judah. And in the face of that, should I think, and to say what? I am a man who believes that you cannot live a pure and sincere life based on the Bible and be saved. Christianity is no better than Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Shintoism, Sikhism, Confucianism, Taoism, and Baha'ism. Because they all serve the same Satan. It was through a vision that I came to God and it is through visions that I will do the will of God. And I have seen that in all the so-called holy books that I have read. And speaking of visions, the vision that I reported in Kaku 151 is an important vision for the church. And milk and honey in that chapter are the two elements of Israel's march to Canaan. The land flowing with milk and honey. And in my day, the old tombs which were the Pharisee, Essene, Hellenist and Sadducee synagogues of the time of the Lord Jesus had been destroyed. And those tombs were now Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical and Branhamist churches. And in this vision of the walk to heaven, I looked and behold, there were before me, on my way, in a clearing, people dressed in white robes, walking in a row on a track which went up to the gate of the heavens. And a multitude was before the gate of the heavens. And the gate of the heavens was surrounded by a white cloud. And they were silent and did not look to the left, or to the right or backwards. And their path was not bordered by ditches, and my voice could no longer reach them. I was like a door. And at times a person from behind would come and pass through me. And his garment would change to a white robe. And he would immediately go into the clearing and join the front group. And then, far behind me, there was another disordered group. And the people of this group had different clothes and were making noise and jostling with each other. And they were pestering me to get them across the ditch. Because from behind them up to me, the path was bordered by two ditches dug by run-off water. It was like impossible to help them stay in line. And because of them, I did not go and join the front group. And I saw that a person who is the wife of a pastor had jumped to cross the ditch. And behind the ditch, on the one side, were recidivists with their doors open. 
and on the other side. The rest of the world in a huge prison whose door is a solid iron gate. And I opened the grill gate of the prison so that they might come out, but they did not come out, for they were like mad people. And they all spoke the language of money and money magic. This vision is certain and true. In their walk to heaven, the foolish virgins do not have white robes. All those pictures and videos we see everywhere with all ten virgins in white robes walking together are lies of Satan. And when a prophet leaves the earth, the door to heaven is closed because he is the door to heaven. And as they passed through the prophet, the wise virgins received the wedding garment and the spirit of him who is in the prophet. And when the prophet dies, the prophet will join them. All those who had passed through the prophet are saved in his lot and can no longer lose salvation. Even in the disorder after the death of that prophet, they are in the dimension of the rapture and eternity. And all those who had not passed through the prophet while the prophet was alive on the earth, will not be in the first resurrection with this prophet. And they can even leave their position as foolish virgins and go to hell if they are the perpetrators or actors in the disorders that will come after the prophet's death. And the front group was so quiet that it seemed to me that it was made of people who were not happy on the earth. And their appearance was almost pitiful. They were all dressed in white while in the group behind me. Some were dressed as Muslims and others in different ways. And the woman who jumped can be the wife of a pastor but especially an assembly. So, a pastor or an apostle can be a son of the devil, a disciple of money. And the wife of a pastor can be a pagan. And if an assembly is not in the spirit of the message, God allows you to be there but in a different spirit, if you do not know where to go. Respect a pastor or a leader within the limits of the message but do not take him as a prophet messenger. My Branhamist pastor forbade us from going to gatherings of several Branhamist churches. And the whole church, including him, did not go, but I went. And being in his church, I often went to worship in any other Branhamist church when we did not have service. I had a brotherly fellowship with all. And from November 1993 until I left them in March 2002 for the beginning of my ministry. He never allowed me to hold the smallest office in his church. To gain the favor of a pastor of Satan. One must see him as a prophet and follow him as his disciple. In all my life. I have never acted with hypocrisy or by influence. Hypocrisy is the work of the sons of the devil. I do not have the soul of a son of the devil. We are in the age of hypocrisy. And the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the soul of a hypocrite. Because when the Holy Spirit tells him that what the pastor or so and so is doing is not right, he will remain silent. A son of the devil has hypocrisy in his soul and hypocrisy leads to hell. Every sin is paid for on the earth. During your life, you will begin to pay for every sin that you committed in your life. I have come across many cases of sickness and suffering and their origin was always the sin of the person, their spouse or their parent. When you have an endless illness or suffering, Start by asking forgiveness from all those that you have hurt and the husbands of all the women with whom you have committed adultery. And since 2002, according to Luke 17:30, I have re-established the public confession, which is the way provided by God in our time for the atonement of the sins of every human. My message is the only way of salvation for mankind today. And every religious leader should echo my message. 
but they prefer to follow dead prophets so they can twist the message of those dead prophets as they wish without being bothered. And if there must emerge a thousand branches from their message, they do not mind. And what those religious leaders do with the holy books of their religions is what Branhamists do with the message of William Branham without it bothering their conscience. And they reject me and claim to serve God. Can a priest lead a man to God? In which Bible is that found? In 300 years, mankind will not know that you existed on the earth. You will all disappear with your memory. And it is through my message that mankind will know that, for example, in Ueso in Congo Brazzaville, because of the word of God. A pastor of Satan called Thomas Boo and his Branhamist Church Logos Tabernacle had thrown in prison several of my disciples, including Apostle Stephen Bambi. William Branham never called the police. But the pastors in his message call the police when someone preaches near their temple. And yet, preaching in front of a church is a Christian doctrine. In the history of the church, Christians have always preached in front of churches. And it was on the door of a Catholic church that Luther stuck his 95 theses. And if one day a disciple of John Wesley preaches in front of a Lutheran church, how can Lutherans call the police? I will not put someone in jail for anything in the world and then go worship God with a clear conscience. A son of God does not have this ability. And all the holiness of a Branhamist pastor is 20 years of marriage, 20 years of faithfulness. And yet they are all pig farmers and their churches are pigsties of sins. To be faithful to one's wife, Aren't drunkards and cigarette smokers faithful? What about your Louis Sagan, King James and Schofield Bibles and others? What about football and the movies that you watch? What about you being immobilized in your sleep and the sex dreams and other things that you have? Faithfulness to a wife, if that is your holiness. Then what holiness will Prophet Moses teach to the Pope of Rome? And what holiness will your women teach to the Catholic nuns who are in convents and monasteries? And when you reject public confession and say, Proverbs 28:13 says that he that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them obtains mercy, how can this be possible if it is not in public confession? The holiness of the couple that God is asking from you today is to preach that during pregnancy or after the menopause, a couple must abstain from sex. Rather declare from the pulpit how long you have gone without approaching your own wives. In Latin America, a man named Xavier Perez and his wife Lupita sought God with all their hearts. They knew that if a dead Moses could not save the Pharisees, then a dead prophet cannot save anyone today. And having come across my message, they believed even though I am a black African. And for their holiness, they decided to abstain from sex after their baptism. And it is now a year and three months since their baptism that they have not known each other. Well, when I received the cane from France, I had seen in a vision that an angel was handing me a blue card saying, Shelve this until the death of the leader of your people. The cane is made of hazel. The hazel tree of Ivory Coast is an extremely hard wood. And it is impossible for a human to break its nuts with his teeth. And after that, on the morning of June 5, 2022, while I was thinking about going to Congo Kinshasa for my very first trip, I had another vision. An angel appeared to my right in a cloud and said, You will go to South Africa first. And he immediately disappeared before I could see him. And Apostle Amon Martin said in the vision, Ah! So Haman is dead. 
and the vision disappeared. And through several revelations like this one, I understood that Ewald Frank is the head of the posterity of William Branham. Today, the posterity of William Branham is like Israel and Ewald Frank is its king. And I was sent as a prophet to this people according to Matthew 25 6. I was with this people of William Branham from the vision in 1993 until 2002. And these visions have changed the way I see Ewald Frank. And I gave the name Kaku Frank Ewald to my last son. After the visions of 1993, I went to several evangelical churches without receiving baptism. And I had not spent more than three months in any of them. But since I came across the message of William Branham in November 1993, I stayed there until the beginning of my ministry in 2002. And throughout my ministry until today, I have remained faithful to William Branham's message while following my own vision with my own message like Joshua after Moses. Like Joshua, I have not turned to the left or to the right from everything William Branham preached. And it is on the foundation of William Branham that I have built. And everything I preach is what William Branham would have preached if he was on earth today in an African body according to Mark 13:35, which is the other half of Matthew 24 27. Thus, William Branham's people was my people from 1993 until the beginning of my ministry in 2002 because the torch of the prophets was there. Moses was in the house of Pharaoh to take the torch of the prophets that Joseph had left there. Even the Lord Jesus worshipped God with the Jews in their temples and synagogues of Satan because of the torch of Moses and the prophets. That is why the Jews left their pulpits to him. Every true prophet has always done that. Luke 4:16 says, And Jesus entered, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And when he now had the torch, he no longer went there, and his language became, You Pharisees and Sadducees, you breed of vipers, whitened coffins, after the vision on the way to Damascus, Paul first had to go and take the torch left by the Lord Jesus from the Apostles. And when he had taken it, he began to rebuke Peter and the Apostles. This is a divine law. A prophet will never rise after me while he has not come to my message and received baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for restitution. Whether a man comes from nothing or is born without a father, he is always identified with a people and a tribe. And this is both carnal and spiritual. A legitimate son has kindred. And the whole life of a prophet is the word of God. For example, I was born in December 1972 at 3 kilometers from C. Kensey. And at the same time, E. Wald Frank, Alexis Berlier and Alex Bernofsky were in C. Kensey and the mixed race woman in the vision is called Afu Roslin. She is my relative and her father's name is Amon and my wife's name is Afu Rosen. Daughter of Mbra Parfait. The man who had the support of Alexis Berlier, Ewald Frank's companion. God removes his prophets from the earth. But never the torch, the keys of the kingdom or the spirit that was on the prophet. And while waiting for another prophet, God leaves the keys of the kingdom to a Matthew 24 45 who is a disciple of the dead prophet. And one day a prophet will come out of my message or someone will come here. Get baptized and then come out with the torch that I left here. A plagiarist does not do that. And to put his message in the hands of someone for distribution. That is the torch in the height of trust. It is beyond his Bible to his son Joseph. The torch or the keys of the kingdom have always been on the earth in the hand of a man who was with the previous prophet. William Branham said in the booklet Getting in the Spirit, Raph, 12, 
when God works with one man, he has another one waiting. And God takes his man, but never his spirit. He always has got somebody else on the earth he can put his spirit on. And before I came, Ewald Frank was for William Branham what Peter was for the Lord Jesus before Paul came. And what Melanchthon was for Luther before John Calvin came. But this did not turn Peter or Melanchthon into a prophet messenger. And that was Ewald Frank's error. And since 2002, I have been prophesying over this people of William Branham and the nations around. Whether Ewald Frank is good or bad, he is the spiritual king of Israel today. And if the Bride of Christ was enlightened before the midnight cry, it was by the message of William Branham thanks to Ewald Frank. Had it not been for Ewald Frank, the earth would have not known the message of William Branham. Soon after the death of William Branham, Ewald Frank started to translate and send William Branham's booklets all over the world, and to travel. And it was after this, seeing the people who believed everywhere in the world, that Billy Paul and Joseph Branham also had in mind in the 1980s to produce also the booklets of their father William Branham. So, before my ministry, almost all those who were seeking God had already left their temples, churches and mosques and were gathered in the message of William Branham thanks to Ewald Frank. Any believer of William Branham's message who speaks against Ewald Frank is a rebellious and ungrateful adopted son. Even a father who becomes a drunkard keeps his identity, his dignity and his respect as a father. If I condemned Ewald Frank, it was as a prophet because of his doctrines and of his own booklets and circular letters that he distributed instead of William Branham's booklets. Ewald Frank fulfilled the faithful servant of Matthew 24:45, And then he also fulfilled the unfaithful servant of Matthew 24:48. The ministry of the faithful bondman turned unfaithful as the ministry that precedes the midnight cry. It was Ewald Frank, the same faithful bondman who distributed William Branham's booklets who became the unfaithful bondman of Matthew 2448 distributing his own booklets and circular letters. Ewald Frank had to stick to the mission of distributing William Branham's booklets only. Like a chamberlain or a slave, he had to stick to what his master told him. The book of Esther is the revelation on the bride of the nations. There are seven angels in heaven for seven chamberlains on the earth and then Haggai. An eighth chamberlain on the earth comes with the midnight cry which is the edict of Mimukin, the same seventh heavenly angel. And Vashti, the old Branhamist queen like a widow had organized a feast with Ewald Frank who is Haman, the greatest servant of King Ahasuerus. And since the beginning of my ministry, I had already revealed who Ewald Frank was and all the evil that he was going to do to is real with his booklets and circular letters. Dear Ewald Frank, despite the vision of April 24, 1993, I have dedicated my life to the quest for eternity. And I understood that salvation is God through an angel who hides behind a human to act. And when the human dies, God takes another human. This will never stop until the end of the world. And that's what you must teach instead of leading people to the Bible. Every religion teaches it. In his thousandth reincarnation, Arjuna will never prefer the Bhagavad Gita to a living Krishna. And Shariputra will never prefer the Lotus Sutra to the Bhagavat, the Supreme Tathagata. In all religions, the path of the living prophets is the only dharma of the human existence to attain the final nirvana. It is men who turn away from it through wicked guides like you. And in your circular letter of April 2019, you said, 
Brother Branham said, in the evening time there shall be light. This has come to pass. But now we have now arrived at midnight. Brother Branham has completed his commission. I am also carrying out my commission. How could you let Satan get the better of you to this point? Can Simon Peter say that about the Lord Jesus? And now, instead of William Branham's sermons, it is Ewald Frank's old sermons from the 1980s that are broadcast every Sunday on the internet. And in Krefeld, Paul told Timothy to preach the word. But will the circular letters of Timothy replace Paul's epistles after Paul's death? And when Paul tells Timothy to preach the word, does Paul mean to tell Timothy to send circular letters to Corinth, Rome, and Ephesus as Paul did? Dear E. Wald Frank, you are my father and it is with respect that I speak to you. You have done much good to the bride of Christ at this end of time. But, after that, you have also done much evil to the bride. And if you do not repent before your death, you will appear before God with the leprosy of King Uziah. Dear Father Ewald Frank, you have been a valiant man who has done good to the earth. And I know the weight of a world mission like yours. But the wicked pastors, and preachers around you spent their time admiring you instead of helping you as the 80 priests of Israel did to King Uzziah in 2 Chronicles 26. Pastors who only have greatness in the number of their church members and in the size of their cathedrals. And soon the Branham Tabernacle in Jeffersonville will become. Before your eyes. The Branham Cathedral according to Kaku 3918. And your companion Alexis earlier had called your attention saying, When you got down from the platform and started bowing, while touching the hand of the preachers, I had under my eyes what I had seen on television being done by the Pope. When he got down in the middle of his cardinals and bishops gathered around him. And why were you deaf to this appeal? How and through whom should God call your attention? Why do you and your pastor disciples always prefer to listen to those who tell you things you want to hear? Dear E. Wald Frank, Out of the tribe of Dan came Judas Iscariot. And Judas Iscariot had betrayed his master Jesus. But Judas Iscariot was so remorseful that he went and hanged himself. And the tribe of Dan and Judas Iscariot was again replaced. And his name was blotted out again. And you. You had to mistreat and put the church to sleep so that the cry would sound at midnight. But you never felt remorse to the point that you asked William Branham if the Nazi blood would fall on you too. What answer did you expect from William Branham? I that speak to you. When I see black Americans in the United States, I am gripped with sadness and guilt like the brothers of Joseph and their father Jacob. Except that, when we sold them, they were not supposed to be boogie-woogie and praise break dancers like the Egyptians. And then God would have raised them like Joseph over Egypt. Today, Africa is in misery. God has brought Africa to its knees. And the same Mediterranean Sea in which the ancestors of those black Americans died in slave ships, is in this same Mediterranean Sea in which we die in migrant ships because of this evil. And is it possible for you two not to be guilty? And for the Nazi blood not to be on your hands? At the time of the Holocaust of the Jews in Germany, you were already born and therefore you should speak about the evil that the Nazis did to you and your parents because you hid Jews in your homes. If the Shoah is to be blamed only on the Nazi actors and not on their children and grandchildren, 
Why then should the blood of Jesus fall on the Jews in Germany according to Matthew 27 25? As those Jews in Germany were not born when their great grandparents killed the Lord Jesus in Israel 2000 years ago. How do you explain the guilt of the Jews who died in the Holocaust? And if you are innocent, why did God, who is just, allow Satan to bring obscurity upon the light brought by William Branham in the evening time through you? How do you explain the death of those thousands of black Africans in the Mediterranean? while they were not there when their parents sold slaves to Europeans during the slave trade. Why is my skin black when I was not in Egypt when my parents were making the Jews suffer and worshipping Isis, Osiris and Amun Ra and defying Adonai, the God of the Jews? I was not born but I was in their loins and therefore I am guilty. If Levi in the loins of his great-grandfather Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, then I am guilty of the worships of Satan in Egypt, and the sale of slaves during the slave trade. And what I have to ask for is the pardon of all the inhabitants of the earth, and the mercy of God. Dear Father Ewald Frank, Know that even a woman filled with the Holy Spirit gives birth with pain because of the sin of Eve since Eden. Dear E. Wald Frank, do you know that Judas Iscariot is from the tribe of Dan? And that it is necessarily a son of the tribe of Dan who had to deliver the Lord Jesus? And do you know that it was necessarily a son of Nazi Germany who had to bring darkness and put the church, which is spiritual Israel, to sleep so that the cry would sound at midnight according to Matthew 25 6. Do you know that all of those pastors who admire you are the leaders of your Nazi Gestapo to abuse and put the ten virgins to sleep so that the cry may sound at midnight? Since God also speaks to you, I believe you know this. Dear E. Wald Frank, Israel has always rejected the prophets and now Israel. It is the nations. Could it not be that you are also rejecting a prophet at this time so you can only listen to those who tell you things you want to hear? Maybe you were expecting to see big crowds and public demonstrations to pay attention to me but remember the angel said it would be a small cry in a small ministry under a tent. It would be God in simplicity and you have to look down to see. And to enter into a tent, you have to stoop down. Dear E. Wald Frank, you are not a prophet but you have had the answer to all questions, and you have interpreted the whole book of Revelation literally. In more than 50 years of ministry, not once did you say, this question that you are asking me, only a prophet can answer it. Your message should have been, dear brethren, like Apostle Peter, I am only a useless servant to whom the Master has entrusted the keeping of the house until another prophet like Paul comes, and then I will make way for him. If you did that, Barry Green, Alexis Barrier, Joseph Coleman, Joaquim Gonçalves from Brazil and all the pastors in the message of William Branham would not behave like prophets without a message. And now, because of you, Billy Paul Gershom and Joseph Eliezer Branham, the two sons of Moses have also created, with the help of the sons of Korah, their tape ministry to trouble Israel. Dear E. Wald Frank, if Aaron, who is the father and the beginning of the priesthood, led Israel to the worship of a golden calf, who are you? Dear E. Wald Frank, is it possible that after the death of a prophet, a priest leads the people of God into the will of God? In many dreams and visions that I have been told concerning my ministry, people tell me that at the end of their dream the prophet disappears, and the man to whom the prophet leaves the people leads the people on a different path. 
This is a divine law. The priesthood always leads the people of God back into darkness. And the message of the next prophet always comes as a midnight cry. And you know this better than me according to the vision of Junior Jackson in which each preacher went his own way instead of remaining there to wait for the interpretation of the white stone which is the unknown tongue of the Sabino Canyon. The unknown tongue that I received on April 24, 1993, and of which my message is the interpretation. Apostle Peter, in spite of the keys of the kingdom, never said, Jesus fulfilled his mission. I too am fulfilling my mission. And you went so far as to say, do not trust the prophet, but God whom you will find in the Bible. William Branham was born like you and me. Focus on the Bible. Your ultimate battle has always been to bring the believers of William Branham back to the Bible-based evangelical faith, and not to the prophetic faith. And none of those who claim to love you have tried to help you as the priests did with King Uzziah in 2 Chronicles 26. And today, because of you, the Branhamists who claim to be of a prophet have become ridiculous. And where there is an event, they will never say, O oh God of the prophets, what do these events mean? In January 2021, they all shouted, Oh, Kamala Harris is the fulfillment of the vision of Brother Branham. And in 2022, they all shouted, Oh, Russia is fulfilling Brother Branham's prophecy. A shameful madness that is not even found among Catholics and Muslims. And for all these false statements they make, they will never go to their churches or to the internet to ask for forgiveness. They have no fear of God. And all that, you, Ewald Frank, are responsible for it. If today all Branhamist pastors have calls and commissions and pillars of fire, you are responsible for it. In the whole Bible since Moses, have you ever seen a priest who has a call and commission like you? Could Aaron, Peter and Timothy tell those experiences that you tell before your ignorant church members? And you have made the time of famine an eternity. How can a famine be eternal? And will you leave the earth without the master establishing another person in your place to distribute the same old food of more than half a century ago? Will you leave the church in confusion? Dear E. Wald Frank, when by the man William Branham, God brought the evening light to the earth, by which man in the message, did Satan bring obscurity over the light of William Branham? And who put the church to sleep if it is not you? Just as light is not imaginary, obscurity is also not imaginary. They are both messages. Do you know that you have reproduced in William Branham's message exactly what Melanchthon did with Luther's group before John Calvin came? Dear E. Wald Frank, in the message of William Branham, who brought another message if it is not you? The evening light is a message. The midnight cry is a message. But whose message brought obscurity between the evening light and the midnight cry? Do you at least ask yourself the question to know, if the message of William Branham brought light to the earth in the evening time? What brought obscurity on the message of William Branham if it is not your booklets, and circular letters? Dear E. Wald Frank, I beseech you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you resist me today, know that it is the angel of the Ohio River that you resist. And you and all those who follow you will all be on your knees before me at the last judgment because of this question. Dear Ave Wald Frank, to help you, the eclipse is when the moon, the circular star, circular letter, takes the place of the sun and wants to illuminate the earth. And on April 24, 1993, it was the angel, the same angel of the Ohio River that the eclipse was hiding. And it was from behind the eclipse that the angel came out with the lamp to descend again on the earth for a new light which illuminated the earth again. 
The eclipse in the vision of April 24, 1993 was nothing but your circular letters that brought darkness upon the message of William Branham. I am saying this to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in virtue of the call and commission that I received on April 24, 1993. Dear E. Wald Frank, God knew that you would bring darkness upon the evening light. And the mission of the midnight cry would be to attack your darkness. And not to fight the evangelicals and Muslims who were already on the earth when William Branham brought the evening light. Dear Father Ewald Frank, let my words not irritate you because it is the angel of the Ohio River who is speaking to you now. If you think that God cannot speak to you through me. Also know that in the walk towards God, the fool can teach the wise wisdom. And a donkey can give revelations to a prophet of God. If God said to you, Ewald Frank, my servant, the time is coming when they will listen to you. Does this mean that you are a prophet messenger? Who is the prophet through whom you have known the interpretation of this? And the interpretation of the German eagle, the English horseman, the combine harvester and the sword of December 31, 1965. Dear E. Wald Frank, in Acts 13. Separate me Barnabas and Saul. Does this mean that Barnabas is a prophet messenger like Paul? Can everyone take his revelations as calls and commissions? And why do you interpret, yourself, such great revelations that involve the salvation of mankind while you are not a prophet messenger? For the interpretation of the revelations that God gives you, why do you not cry out like Elisha, where is the God of Elijah? God speaks to his prophets through symbols. And a prophet can rush to give a false interpretation to those symbols. You know the seven visions that William Branham had in June 1933. Including the one in which a woman would rule the United States before 1977. And also, the calendar of mankind that stopped on 1977. And you know what William Branham's interpretation of that was? That 1977 would mark the end of the world and usher us into the millennium. And on several occasions, like his sermon, the 70th week of Daniel, preached on August 6, 1961, William Branham said that all these seven visions would be fulfilled between 1933 and 1977. But things did not happen according to his understanding and interpretation. And you know what our enemies have done with it. What about you, Ewald Frank, who are not a prophet messenger? Isaiah 44 26 says that God confirms the words of his prophets. But God does not confirm the misinterpretations that a prophet gives to a vision of God. And at some point in his life, a prophet may experience a decline and he will need to go to the heights of the mountains like the eagle to renew himself. This is why, after John the Baptist presented the Lord Jesus, he wanted to deny that and wanted to withdraw this part from his message. He sent his disciples to ask if Jesus was really the Christ. After Luther preached the double predestination, he denied the double predestination and declared that it is all mankind that is predestined for salvation. But just after Luther, John Calvin came with the message of double predestination. And in our time, on Sunday, March 24, 1963, during his preaching on the seventh seal, William Branham clearly announced the future coming of another prophet for a ministry under the tent and of the unknown tongue in the light that would speak to this other prophet above him. But William Branham, seeing that the pillar of fire would thus leave him to go and speak to this other prophet above him, he was disturbed and denied his own revelation on the same day. And William Branham asked that this part of his sermon on the seventh seal should not be published. And the next day, Monday, in an office, 
William Branham recorded another 20-minute audio to replace this part. And it was after his death that the whole original of the seventh seal containing the ministry under the tent, and the unknown tongue in the light speaking to another person above him was published. A prophet is a god who suffers from his human side and then dies like any human. A prophet is a human who has only benefited from a special grace from God. And all this, you know it better than me because, seeing all the revelations that you received, you were destined to be a great Ephesian prophet over the flock of William Branham but, having taken the wrong path, your ministry of teacher who is the face of a man has taken over your ministry of prophet. In this age of prophetism, William Branham cannot leave his torch to a teacher who is his face of man but to a prophet who is his face of eagle. That is why he said, My son Joseph will take my Bible, he is a prophet. I am not telling you imaginations. It was as a prophet that William Branham had entrusted you with the flock and I confirm it because it is the one who has the food who can feed the flock like Peter. But you quickly passed from prophet to teacher and you know this in your heart according as your last revelations do not match the first ones. Ewald Frank, my father, what you had to do for me according to the order of God and his prophet William Branham, you did it. Since 1994 and for years, I received booklets from you without paying anything. And I too, everything a prophet has to say, I have said it faithfully according to the visions that I received from God. And from everything I have said, do not keep in mind what can lose you. Jesus did not only say to Peter, get away behind me, Satan. And as a prophet, I must say what I receive from God and not what people want to hear. And everything I have said to you, I did not say it out of arrogance, otherwise forgive me. Arrogance is not part of the culture of a prophet. Ewald Frank, my father, if I put forth visions, who would interpret them? But according to the ability that God has given me, I have spoken to you according to these visions. And convincing you was not my intention. Far be it. God is the only one who has the power to convince. For my part, I am happy to have told you everything I received from the angel of April 24, 1993 who is the angel of the Ohio River. And I am happy to have loved you before you leave the earth. Thank you, Father Ewald Frank for everything you have done for the earth and also for me. You've just listened to Kaku chapter 152. The last words of Kaku Philip, to you old Frank. The message of Prophet Kaku Philip, is in more than 100 sermons, in written and audio versions. You can get them for free on the website, www.philipkaku.org, or, in version for mobile phone, 